Hello and welcome to everyone for our Eloqua Office Hours. This is our monthly discussion for Eloqua professionals. My name is Richard Holder and I've been an Eloqua user for over 12 years. I'm currently the head of marketing at Forthought Marketing and I am based in Utah. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, joining me today is Linda David. Go ahead, Linda, and wave and say hi to everyone. Linda is uh, a senior marketing operations consultant for us, and I'll let her uh, say a little bit more about her background when she goes to speak. Um, we have others standing by who will be answering questions that come up, so feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, today's presentation will be uh, recorded and a link will be sent to you tomorrow. Um, I do invite you to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Uh, for questions. It helps us manage those and make sure that we get to everyone and um, and follow up to those we can't get to. Um, and you're free to ask about today's topics or future topics that you'd like to see us. So don't limit yourselves just to the presentation that's going on. So with all of that background, let me turn it over to you, Linda, and I look forward to seeing your presentation. Thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Linda David. I am a senior marketing operations consultant here at Forthought Marketing. I've been in the Eloqua ecosystem almost 20 years now. So starting as a client back in 2003, joined the Eloqua crew in 2005 through the Oracle acquisition and was there for 10 years in a variety of different roles. I've been with the Forethought team now for six years and uh, really enjoy working with my clients and helping them with complex data and strategy uh, projects. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here today and, and talk to you all about campaign responses. So as Richard mentioned, please uh, send your questions in. I do have, I, I wanna start with a presentation uh, because I find the Eloqua campaign responses are a bit of a kind of a secret area that uh, unless you really know what's going on, it's hard to know what's going on with them. Uh, so I'm going to kick it off. So I'm going to start with campaign responses and how they work. Uh, so this probably familiar uh, to a lot of you, it starts with the Eloqua campaign and the campaign canvas or the simple campaigns. It's really important that that campaign has a CRM campaign ID because that's the linkage that Eloqua is going to make uh, to create the campaign response for a contact. Uh, so on a campaign, you'll have your email asset. And then if you have forms related to the campaign and you want those included as a campaign response, it's important to have those on the campaign canvas as well if they share the same campaign ID that is on the canvas. So you have your campaign set up with your campaign ID. Your, you activate the campaign and there's a number of different campaign activities that can take place. So sending the email, the recipient opens the email, clicks the email, submits the form, and you can also add on um, external activities. So if you have webinars uh, and you want to capture uh, the attended, no response or attended and uh, or just registered, uh, you can trigger an external activity with which then will create a campaign response. So the combination of the Eloqua contact on the campaign performing these activities will create a campaign response, but these are defined by response rules. So you need to have the response rules set up. And the response rules are where you define what those response activities are. So what do you, what do you consider a campaign response? Does it go down to the email send level, which some of my clients um, want that reflected in their CRM campaigns? Or does it stop, does it go down just to the email click through, which is, you know, someone actually taking an action that would constitute a meaningful response? In this area for response rules, 
in addition to the response activities, you are also setting what the CRM member status will be. So I'm showing an example here from Salesforce, where on the webinar side, there's attended, registered, and then for form submitted, email click through, responded. So you can set these to whatever your CRM system is expecting as a Salesforce or sorry, a, a CRM member campaign status. Uh, here's an example with Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, same thing, you define what is that, that member status that is going to be sent over to CRM when that related response activity takes place. You can also set whether the, the response activity will be defined as a responded uh, in the CRM system. And then, of course, you need to set a default, which is usually set as the lowest, uh, the lowest uh, priority item. Uh, the way that the priorities happen, um, so this is also very important to make sure you have your response rules in a priority order, is that when there's multiple response activities on the same campaign, the priority is set up, so Alec was going to send over the highest priority response activity. So in the example of an email being sent from a campaign, I'll use the, actually I'll use the webinar. This is a really good example. Um, so the email is sent, somebody clicks through the email, they submit the form. So do that on Monday. Then when this goes through the process to send that campaign response over to CRM, the form submit and responded is going to be sent to CRM. When the webinar takes place and on a Friday, let's say, somebody goes back to the email, they click because they want to, they need to get the link that status is not going to revert back to email click through because it's a lower priority. And then once they get marked as attended, that's the highest priority status. So it's never going to revert back to click through, even if the person goes back a week after the webinar, click on an email, it's not going to pass through the lower priority item because Eloqua knows the higher priority uh, response activity has taken place. So it's another key thing when you're working with response rules is to make sure the priorities are set up. So we have the campaign activities that take place. Aliqua then generates a campaign response and sends it to the CRM system. This middle section is really a bit of a, a black box in Aliqua. Uh, there's this process behind the scenes, has a separate table that manages the campaign responses. And it needs to go through a process to convert those activities based on the response rules, based on the priorities, to create a campaign response in this kind of back end campaign response table. This process happens at five minutes past the hour. And I only know that because I've worked at Eloqua and, and at one point it was obvious when, I guess with Eloqua 9, um, the campaign response table was more visible. Um, so you could see exactly when these campaign responses and what campaign responses were being created. Um, so five minutes past the hour, this process happens. And then they're ready to be sent over to the CRM system. So often when there's issues with campaign responses not going over to CRM, it's because it's a timing issue and they've gone through the program to, or the process to send the campaign responses over, but that campaign response doesn't yet exist in that table to be passed to the CRM system. So now I'm going to cover the different ways that the campaign responses can get sent from Eloqua to CRM. So we're back on the response rule uh, configuration screen. And there's a section at the bottom where you can select 
how those campaign responses are going to be sent over to CRM. So you can use Program Builder for campaign associations. You can use a program or campaign and or campaign canvas for campaign associations, or you can use integration rules. You can only select one of these options. And then this is what Alec was looking at when those campaign responses are in that behind the scenes table. It's looking at the delivery method of one of these three options. Salesforce with the new integration app, well, a newer integration app, not that new anymore, um, as well as sales, uh, Oracle Sales Cloud allows you the option for the program and campaign canvas. With other CRM systems like Microsoft Dynamic, Dynamics, you can either use Program Builder, which has the, the records have to go through, you know, workflow to get to the step to send those responses over, or you can use integration rules. Um, but my recommendation and preference is to use Program Builder or a program uh, canvas for the campaign associations. And you'll see why when we walk through some of a couple of the workflow examples. So this is telling Eloqua how to send the data over. So then we need to set up, in this case, uh, for Salesforce or Oracle Sales Cloud, the program canvas. The nice thing with uh, using the app and having um, the options that are available on the program canvas is this listener step over in the top left you can have as a campaign response so it it really does that work for you that as soon as that campaign response is generated five minutes past the hour it's going to trigger and send those records through so for this setup we want to make sure that they're created first in CRM and Salesforce. So the listener step is feeding them directly to the CRM update program. And then there's a step in the CRM update program that feeds them back in. So we know they've gone through, they were successfully created as a lead, or the lead was updated, or the contact was updated. And then we put it in a wait step to give enough time for the lead to be created. Uh, well, the lead update and contact update would happen immediately. And then we want to check to see if there's a contact ID or the lead ID. Because otherwise, if you send them straight through, it's going to try and send these campaign responses, but nothing happens because they don't have their lead ID yet, for example, or they don't exist in the CRM system. Uh, so we, and then you can also set priority uh, for this example, it's only going to create the campaign response. Uh, actually, that's configured on on the campaign response here. But we want to make sure it has one of these IDs before it goes through. So this step, this said Salesforce campaign responses, this is kind of the behind the scenes piece that happens where campaign responses in that table, as the contact comes through, the, the step is checking, okay, for this contact, what are all of the responses that haven't yet been sent over to CRM and pushing them all over. So whether there was one campaign response or 20 for different campaigns, it's going to send all of those over through this step. And then the configuration of that response action is done in the Salesforce integration app in this campaigns and response actions step. So in this step is where you define the mapping of the lead ID, the contact ID, and then the behind the scenes response table field that's going to store that campaign member ID. Um, I know we had a question previous to this uh, to the office hours, what happens 
if you have more than one CRM system that you want to pass campaign responses to. With this response action, as well as with Program Builder, which I'll be showing you shortly, it does, it is limited to a single uh, CRM system. So there's not the ability to have multiple calls within this one response action so that it triggers different calls from this uh, Salesforce campaign response uh, action to Salesforce. So if we look at Program Builder, if you have, if you're using a CRM system other than Salesforce or Oracle Sales Cloud, a very, very similar setup. So your step inputs um, set up a very, well, you would, you would define who gets pushed into this similar to the program canvas. So probably from your CRM update program, check first whether there's a contact ID or lead ID. And then this is the step here that does all of that behind the scenes, uh, look up to that hidden campaign response table and sends all of the campaign responses over. And then on the integration level, in the internal events, the mapping for what fields are sent over is done in this campaign association contact for this step. And that is very quick review of how the campaign responses uh, get sent over. So the beauty of all of this is that once you have your campaign set up with your response rules and the campaign activities take place, then the campaign responses in theory will flow over to CRM without any additional uh, there's no contact fields need to be populated, no custom objects need to be created and populated and managed. Um, so it's all done with that kind of behind the scenes campaign response processor, as I call it. Uh, and then the program or program canvas that sends all of those to CRM. So I'd like to open it up to questions now. All right, let me check the queue here and uh, see that the only question that we had come in is actually one that you covered during your presentation talking about uh, integration with more than one uh, sales, uh, Salesforce, I guess that's SF instance. Mm -hmm. um, so it only one is possible. There's not a workaround or a way to get it to go into two. Though I guess the workaround would be not using the response rules and this process here. So it would be creating custom object for each campaign response, and then having a program for each different CRM to check, does the ID for CRM one have a value or lead ID for CRM one have a value, send the campaign uh, or create a campaign member or update a campaign number in that CRM one. And then similarly, does the CRM uh, ID for CRM two have a value? And then it would be a different call that you'd be uh, configuring either in the integration app or integration area uh, to send those over. So it's a little, there's a little bit more setup that would be required and unfortunately unable to leverage the kind of the magic magical backend campaign response process great so there is a solution it's just a uh, more work and more configuration uh, to make it work for your specific implementation that's right all right um so that's all the questions we have on your specific presentation uh, but we did receive a couple of questions um, as part of the registration. Let me uh, look at those. Uh, so the first one here is the, uh, uh, someone was asking, how can we set a daily or weekly email limits for contacts? 
And I think this is something that uh, we're all looking to make sure that we don't overburden our people with emails. I know some of the organizations that I receive email from, I'm getting, um, you know, two, three, four, five emails a week, and that's too much. And so I'm more likely to to want to opt out than stay on. So if that is something that you you think you might be doing, um, the best way that we would suggest you do this is using filters. And you can set those filters up on your campaign so that you can have a filter that says, for example, um, have you sent more than three or more emails in the last week? And if the filter is true, then you'd want to either take them out of the campaign or you'd want them to, to put them on a delay, maybe a couple of days or uh, maybe a single day. And that way it could go back and reevaluate them and bring them in and send them uh, back through the campaign. Um, or you could have another filter that says if they've been sent an email in the last 24 hours. I know we use this a lot in our own campaigns. Um, if somebody's already been sent an email today, uh, then we pause it for 24 hours just to make sure that they're not getting a couple of emails uh, per day. Um, there are times when you need to send an email on a specific schedule. So you need to be able to, to either route these out or loop them or uh, not based on the priority that these emails have. So it's, if it's time sensitive, you may not be able to apply these same rules. Um, anything you wanted to add to that, Linda? I think you covered that well. Awesome. It, being the head of marketing at Forethought, uh, I have my hands a little bit on the systems, but not as much as I used to. So <laughs> I'm constantly asking Linda and the others for, for tips on this stuff. Um, okay, so let me move to the next question. Um, so this person is asking about a question about using the new campaign member status changing to upsert data into Salesforce, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to, uh, we actually talked a bit, little bit about this beforehand. We're, we have more questions than we have answers on this particular question. So our plan is to reach back out to the two people who asked the same question. Um, and get some more details, and this may find its way into an upcoming uh, office hours if we feel like it's something that others might want to uh, have the same problem um, and need a solution for, and then we'll get back to everyone on that. Otherwise, we'll just take care of this offline. All right, uh, let me check the queue again. All right, so that looks like everything we have for you today. We appreciate everyone for joining us today. Um, this is a great place for us, an opportunity for us to share some of the, the best practices and the activities that uh, we're helping our clients with, and we hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, at the close of this uh, office hours, you'll receive a survey. Uh, we please ask that you take, fill it out, it lets us know how we're doing. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great day.